opening statement, my first opening statement. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin didn't tell me that. I thought the questions were coming. Uh, uh, first of all, it's been a very, um, it's been a very tough week, uh, and the support that we have received from the athletic department and the entire Scarlet Nation has been phenomenal. Um, with all that being said, I would be remiss to not take a moment to acknowledge the fact that, um, yes, we had a game today, uh, but there was a tragedy, uh, a tragedy to say the least, up in Newtown, Connecticut. And uh, all of our prayers are with the families of those um, who, are, who are dealing with this currently. Um, that's a big issue right now, and that's something that, um, again, outside of this game, this win, and these questions that you're going to ask me, I'm sure about you know all the other news that's going on. That's something that I wanted to make sure that I mentioned. But I appreciate the support from the Scarlet Nation, and I wanted to make sure I acknowledged those families and those victims. Uh, now I'll open it up. In 16 years of coaching, have you ever seen a team make 15 of its first 16 shots? I don't believe so. Is that what the uh, stat was today? First 15 out of 16? Straight 15 or 16. Well, I would probably call that divine inter intervention uh, uh, because I certainly didn't teach them how to shoot that well over the last two days. Again, guys, uh, I think guys came in jacked. They were ready to play. They were ready to prove that as a team and as a unit, we were going to stick together. We were going to weather this storm. Uh, and they shared the game. Uh, they, they truly shared the game. That, that was a point of emphasis over the past two or three days. We had to continue to build trust in one another uh, and you know, find the open man, particularly on offense, get off the ball. And that's what we prided ourselves on today, I think, which is why we ended up with 88 points. Uh, but again, the shots just, they just fell. It is what it is sometimes. Did they play for Coach Rice today? Excuse me? Did they play for Coach Rice today? Absolutely, absolutely. They played for Coach Rice. They played for themselves. They play for this university, as they always do. Again, uh, make you know no no bones about it. Um, some of the criticism that this team uh, receives for you know what's perceived as attitudes and or chemistry issues, um, you know they they hear uh, and they wanted to make sure that they displayed a united front today. They wanted to make sure that they showed um, those who were watching the Scarlet Nation uh, that we will play and represent. Um, Rutgers basketball and Coach Rice uh, in the appropriate fashion. I think that's what we showed today. I guess everyone's 100 percent behind Mike. Excuse me. Everyone is 100 percent behind Mike. Absolutely. And, uh, did you try and just keep things as you know, normal as possible? Uh, you know, the last couple of days since suspension, but over the weekend, even before the game today. Yeah, yeah, I would say so. Uh, again. The practice routine has been the same. Uh, I tried to, you know, again, just adopt the formula that, that has been used, whether it's uh, uh, the manner in which we practice, uh, putting out the practice plan ahead of time, meeting with the coaches to discuss strategy. And so, yes, I tried to keep everything as close to the formula as possible. Again, I'm a different person, you know, however, so you might have saw a different, you know, sideline coaching demeanor or what have you. Um, but, yes, the same formula was intact throughout the week. I know you guys have had the rope throughout the film room, but what was the idea to bring it out and have it on the bench today? Where'd that come from? Uh, it was, uh, that represents us. That represents the team. And in a time like this, with so much adversity, a very trying time, a time that many of our young men have not been through before, I think it was important for us as a team to have that visual reminder. That was not out there for anybody else. That was out there to remind us throughout a 40-minute game where we tend to, at times, not hold on to the rope. Uh, when we tend to, you know, we can be a little uh, divisive towards one another. Um, we wanted to make sure that we had that constant reminder that we were going to stay together as a unit today and, um, uh, and finish this game. What, what was, I mean, you've been, a, you've been in this game for a long time, you filled in for Mike last year, but what was today like coming to the, the arena today, like for you, knowing that you know, you're the head coach today? Uh, well, I didn't get much sleep last night. Uh, that, that's that's the first thing. Uh, popped up early this morning. Uh, we know, we again, we went through our normal routine. We met for breakfast as a team, and I think have, the fact that it was a noon game and I didn't have all day to think about it helped. I think the fact that the first group of people outside of my family that I saw at uh, 8 o'clock this morning uh, was the team. And we broke bread together and we laughed and we joked. So, you know, that, that, was, that settled me, <laughs> to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, and again, you know, with the noon tip, we just kind of, things kind of rolled quickly. So we got, we got right into it. So not, not much, you know, not much change. The day went quickly and uh, I'm just glad it turned out the way it did.
Did you do anything or preach any particular mantra over the last 48 hours to help the guys focus on the task at hand and block out what any distractions might have been, Dave? Nothing outside of what Mike normally teaches, you know, handling adversity, dealing with chaos, you know, it's how you respond to things. You know, again, that's those are Mike's mantras, you know. That that rope is was Mike Rice's rope. That's his idea, you know. He bought that in uh, at the beginning of the year and, and made every player and every coach and every manager hold on to that rope. And he explained the importance of holding on to that rope, especially in difficult times. Uh, so, you know, we wanted to hold on to that rope for, for Mike Rice today and for this program. Miles really seems to be coming into his own the last couple of games today in particular. Is he doing anything different uh, than he normally does, or is he just kind of Right now. No, I think he's just comfortable. He's just comfortable. I mean, he comes with a year of maturity. His body is matured. He's matured, you know, uh, both physically and mentally. Uh, the game is slowing down for him, and this is what he's always been able to do. You know, ever since the first time I saw him play as an eighth grader, he's been able to shoot the ball, uh, and he finishes on in transition. So, you know, he's just doing what we expected of him, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, he is one heck of a player, and his on-court demeanor, you know, uh, um, really helps to settle us settle us down. The fact that he's making shots, you know, it, it, it spreads the floor. It allows everybody to now kind of feed off of him. We have now an inside-out game. Uh, we can, we're spreading the ball around. So, you know, he's been phenomenal. And I think he's growing as a person and he's growing as a leader. And uh, he's, he's, he's living up to, you know, what we expected him to be coming out of high school. When was the first time you saw him play? Uh, that was a uh, Fab Frost camp, actually, uh, in uh, Chantilly, Virginia. Going into his uh, going into his eighth grade year, probably. Yeah. What stood out about Miles? Yeah, to you. How small he was. <laughs> to be perfectly honest with you, and how small he was, but he was a jet, and he made every shot. You know, he he, he made every shot back then. Uh, so not not much has changed. Dave, how much did you need Miles when that lead is slowly dropping from twenty five points down to seven, and Miles <clears throat> kind of stepped it up, scoring at that point? Yeah. Well, again. I think the first thing you need when you put Miles on the floor, the first thing you, you feel as a coach is you feel comfort, you know, because he's going to get guys in spots. He's going to lead. You know, he's not going to be erratic. He's not going to be too emotional, too high, too low. And then the other thing, obviously, you need is him to score the ball, him to take and, and make open shots. Uh, so that dual combination, you know, really settles the coach and settles the team. So that's what I look for when I put him in the game in those situations. Does it say anything just about the, the, the players' feelings towards coach that they would play a game like this, <coughs> the first game without him, kind of of how much they wanted to kind of win win for him today? Uh, not sure that I understand that question. Um, first game without coach, right? Correct. And for them to play the way they did without him, kind of show how much they, they care for him and how much they want to play well for him. Not I think, again, I think they played hard for themselves. I think they played hard because, um, you know, they have felt uh, – something that they haven't felt before. Um, again, they're, they're a little bit confused. They're not used to this situation. So I think the first thing they did was they played for one another. And then absolutely, you know, the absence of the coach who is, you know, who was our leader, who was the captain of the ship, who was our inspiration, uh, was something that they obviously played for as well. But let, make no doubt about it, they played for one another in that room first and foremost. And then they played to represent this school well. Uh, two more questions? An actual coach's question. Four, two turnovers. Uh, is that something that needs to be tightened up by next Friday? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, again, we knew that this type of game, this type of team, you know, uh, we were going to be prone to to, to to turn the ball over. Uh, they they run, uh, they play fast tempo, they press, they run and jump. Uh, so they caught us by surprise a couple times. They trap on inbounds passes, which is something that we haven't faced all year. But in reviewing the tape, we noticed that they turned a lot of people over. So, you know, we didn't expect for it to be one of our cleanest games. Uh, but absolutely, you know, again, we can't have 22 turnovers, as you all know, and plan to compete in the Big East. It's as, it's as simple as that. So that was probably the last thing I left them with. Uh, the one negative that I had coming out of this, this game is that we turned the ball over too much and we have to – we have to control that. Are you sure you've never done a press conference before? No, I've never done a press conference before. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, guys.